Hi, so we will be working on the second problem in the mechanics test from 1986. And this problem involves rotations, torque, and moment of inertia, as well as energy. The first part is asking about the object's translational kinetic energy as well as its rotational kinetic energy when it's at the bottom. So to so, begin, we will write down the equation for the conservation of energy, which is energy initially equals and energy finally. So now we write the different components that make up these scenarios. Potential energy, kinetic energy initially, plus rotational kinetic energy because we have an object that is um, rotating and rolling down rather than simply sliding. So, looking at this, we know that our object begins with no um, speed or velocity, so the kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy, which both deal with velocity, um, are zero. And we know that in the end, our bottom is at the uh, our object is at the bottom of the plane, hence its height will be zero, making its potential energy zero. So basically we have um, energy which relates these three components, and let's write out what they equal. So potential energy would equal mgh, and kinetic energy final will equal mv final squared over two, and the rotational kinetic energy ends up equaling I, which is the moment of inertia, times omega squared, which is the rotational velo um, angular velocity, sorry, over 2. So we know that omega equals B over R, that is one of our um, relationships, and the problem told us that in this scenario, our solid sphere has a moment of inertia of 2MR squared over 5. So taking these things, we will try to simplify the expression for the rotational kinetic energy. I'm getting mv squared over 5. So we must realize that this is only the condensed um, version of the expression for the rotational kinetic energy. These three parts that we have um, still make up, you know, the potential energy the kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy. And now the problem is asking us for the kinetic energy as well as the rotational kinetic energy of this object in the end. So let's write that out. The kinetic energy basically um, would end up equaling the potential energy minus the rotational kinetic. So I'm going to write mgh minus m e squared over five and rotational kinetic energy uh, will end up equaling mgh minus mv squared, v final squared, over 2. So we have um, pretty much solutions for um, the kinetic and rotational kinetic energies, but if we actually go back to the prompt, it said that express your answers in ter terms of m, r, h, g, and theta. V is not included in there, so we need to keep going um, and take this a step forward. So we will go back to this um, expression that we were trying to simplify earlier on. We have mgh equals mv squared over 2 plus m v squared over 5. I will cancel out the m's because they are constant um, throughout the equation and that is legal in math and I will combine this side of the equation so gh equals 7 v squared over 10 and because right here um, I want to substitute v squared I will keep um, this v squared right here as well just to make my calculation easier so I get V squared equals 10 GH over 7. And now I will take that back and plug it into these problems right here. So my kinetic energy equals M. 
So that is my answer for my um, kinetic uh, energy in this scenario. And now I have to do the same thing for my rotational kinetic energy. So my rotational kinetic energy equals m. So that is my answer for this. So this is part A. Now we move on to part B of this problem, which says, determine the following for the sphere when it is on the plane. It's linear acceleration and the magnitude of the frictional force acting on it. So now we actually have to... Um, basically look at the scenario and this is where the torque comes in into this problem so we do have this solid sphere rolling down um, I'm just going to draw the forces on it we have mg down normal force going perpendicular to the plane and we have force of friction that is moving alongside the plane that way. basically a simple FBD um, but what I'm going to try to use that for is to figure out my net forces as well as how the torques are acting up in this um, problem. So to start off though, I will like to list all of my um, equations that I can use. I know that some of my torques equals moment of inertia times alpha and alpha is acceleration over radius. And I also know that torque equals force times radius times the sine of the theta in between the two, the force and the radius vector. So going back to my problem, I have to, um, I will start with the torque. I will have to figure out um, where I want my axis to be. So for this problem, I feel like it'll be more appropriate to choose my axis right at the center and here is why because so when I will be writing my torque um, equation for this scenario I will know that for the force of I have three forces here I have force of gravity um, my normal force as well as my force of friction so for my force of gravity um, it goes through the axis, so there is no distance between the force and the center of the mass, or my, the um, sorry, the force and my axis. So R would end up equaling zero. So gravity will not have an effect on the torque, and the same goes for the normal force because it passes through the axis. So I have this frictional force which acts a distance r away from my axis and this in fact will have an effect on the torque so I have um, my torque equation written down here and you can see that this will go to zero this will go to zero and this ends up being um, the only thing that will affect torque so we know that like I wrote over here torque equals moment of inertia times alpha so if we actually write that out we have 2 m r squared over 5 which is the moment of inertia that we got from the problem times a over r and this equals our torque expression from the scenario which is force of friction r sine theta so I'm just going to cancel some stuff out just to make this a bit simpler this r cancel out there and these two r's cancel out because they're on the opposite ends and basically we end up getting that force of friction equals 2 ma over 5 but these are the two values that we're looking for so we are going to keep going with this problem and this time we will look at the um, I guess the balance of forces to figure out how we're going to figure out the exact values for these problems. So we have um, 
uh, normal force going up, force of friction going this way, and this um, force of gravity, which can be divided into two components. We know since the acceleration is downwards that it is the gravitational component that will actually be bigger than the frictional one. And since this is our theta because of trigonometry, and this component basically ends up being mg sine theta, okay? And this is force of friction. So to write our F net, which equals ma, we know that the mg sine theta minus force of friction will create an F net, which will result in an acceleration. So we have this going on here, and we know exactly what um, force of friction equals, or we know the relationship it has with A, so we can plug that into here. So we have MA equals mg sine theta minus 2 ma over 5. So we're looking for the linear acceleration. All these m's cancel out because we can divide them through there. We get 7a over 5 equals g sine theta. And acceleration equals 5g sine theta over 7. And that was the first part of B. So now looking at the second part, um, we will take this acceleration and pretty much put it back in here, sorry, here, to figure out our force of friction. So our force of friction equals 2, two over 7 mg sine theta. And you know, that pretty much means that that's what our answer is. <laughs> um, I'll stop there. <laughs> so now we will look at the last two parts of this problem. And actually, we have a change in the scenario. The problem says, the solid sphere is replaced by a hollow sphere of identical radius r and mass m. The hollow sphere, which is released from the same location as the solid sphere, rolls down the incline without slipping. So part C asks, what is the total kinetic energy of the hollow sphere at the bottom of the plane? So again, we're bringing the energy portion back into the problem. Um, so we have potential energy initially equals to kinetic energy final plus rotational kinetic energy final. And part C asked us about the total kinetic energy. So that will include this entire part. This is the total kinetic energy. Yeah. So this total kinetic energy that we're being asked for equals the potential energy, and we know that potential energy equals mgh, therefore total kinetic energy equals mgh, and that is part C. Let's look at part D. Part D says, state whether the rotational kinetic energy of the hollow sphere is greater than, less than, or equal to that of the solid sphere at the bottom of the plane. Justify your answer. So basically, now we are looking at um, the rotational kinetic energy of one sphere versus the other one. And we have to remember that this equals moment of inertia omega squared over 2. So um, to compare these two, I would think of the moment of inertia because that is something that will vary between the two spheres. One of our spheres is hollow and although the mass of both of them um, is equal, the one that is hollow has more of its mass farther away from its center of mass. So if you would like a picture, here is our solid sphere and our hollow one. So as you can see, more um, if the masses are equal, um, this one will obviously have more of its mass away from its center. Um, 
and that ends up giving it a greater moment of inertia and because the moment of inertia for the hollow sphere is greater um Sorry. Yes, because the moment of inertia for the hollow sphere is greater, it will end up having a greater rotational kinetic energy. And if you really want to use numbers and like the actual relationships to um, help you understand this, we know from the uh, from what was given to us originally that the moment of inertia for the solid one was two m r squared over five. But I can tell you that the moment of inertia for the hollow sphere is 2mr squared over 3. So 2 over 5 versus 2 over 3, um, this one ends up being bigger. Hence, it'll give you a greater rotational kinetic energy at the bottom. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this helped. Um, sorry for my random mistakes in the middle. Thanks. Good luck. Bye.